welcome, my name is Tushara and this is Starmate. Uh, today's episode will be the third in my short Logic series. And we're going to discuss everything about elevators. It will not be a very long tutorial because elevators aren't all that complicated, but, uh, despite how it sometimes looks. And a lot of the logic circuits that uh, we will be using we have covered before in the previous tutorials. Well, this is my first example, like I did with all the other tutorials. I'll start with the most basic of setups we can think of. And in this case, it's an elevator that will only flip between the ground floor and a stop above here. So if you press the button over here, the platform will rise stop at the top and if you press it again then it will go down again to the ground level and as you can see here the rail over here will flip in the direction the, um, the elevator platform is traveling and the simple logic circuit that we use is the one we used many many times before with the flip-flop and not attached to it this will flip the rail to the top position and this will flip the rail to the down position. So that's how we uh, get our elevator platform to travel between the two ports. Of course, elevators between only two points are easy, but what most people are interested in is a elevator platform that will stop at each floor of a multi-floor setup like this one. This is set up for three floors, so one, two, and three. At the moment, the elevator platform is at the uh, bottom position. We've got um, two major uh, button groups that a uh, player can use. This one uh, next to the door is for calling the platform to the floor you are on. So if you're uh, outside the elevator itself, then you can call uh, the platform to your floor then uh, make use of it and these two buttons over here inside the elevator shaft is to move the elevator one floor up or down that's the usual setup i use myself because you can of course add uh, three buttons for each floor a button that you can select within the elevator shaft which floor you're going to stop at but yeah um if you have more than three floors you have the need more buttons and it gets a bit more complicated than, uh, than I want for a user to, um, to select from. So I'll just use the uh, go up and go down one floor. So if we uh, press this one, it goes up, as you can see here, and it stops at this floor. And the red light turns on above the door when the uh, platform is, um, is at this floor. And if you go to the bottom one again, we can call the platform as well, like this. It doesn't really matter where you are. If you are at the top floor, you can call it as well. As you can see here, it moves all the way up. It doesn't stop at this uh, middle floor. And there we go. That's a very easy elevator setup. So first things first, um, the red lights. That uh, go on or off once the platform is at the floor. It's just a button. It's uh, next to the rail the platform is traveling on. So once that um, platform is docked at this rail, then it will turn on and then turn on the light. That's not really that complicated. And as you can see here, every time I press this button, you see the rail setup changing here to. Um, going for example down here and then one to the side for the rails because that will make the platform stop at that, uh, that rail that goes to the side and the way they accomplish this is by these three rows of buttons it's very easy these three buttons correspond with the um, buttons at the doors so this is the top middle and bottom floors and the only thing they do is um, set up the rail configuration to get the platform where it needs to go. The way I do it, I always um, have the, uh, the first button um, going for the sideways rail, so that's all the, the stops where the, um, 
the platform needs to stop for this uh, particular level. And then for the next two buttons, I have to uh, show that in the middle row here, it's just adding a rail that goes up and a rail that goes down. So everything, for example, for the middle, if you press this one for the middle uh, uh, stop, then everything below this stop needs to go up and everything above that stop needs to go down. And this way we make sure that wherever the platform is, it will always go to the designated floor that you press the button on. Goes for each, uh, each floor. The up and down is even easier. If you are in the elevator, that's this pink circuit over here. And these two buttons correspond with the two buttons here inside the elevator shaft. So when you press this, we briefly uh, set the rail that the um, platform is uh, docked at and stopped at the floor, uh, set it to go up or go down, depending on which button you uh, press. And then one click uh, delay later, we set it again to go to the sides. So it will have enough time to move from its current duct position down or up, depending on what you choose, then travel the remaining rail to the next rail that goes to the side. So if you press this one, for example, the up button, it will do that. And as you can see here, if I select this one, every rail is set to go up, so it doesn't really matter which of the floors you are, you're almost going to go up, and then once the um, delay is activated, it will uh, set every floor to the uh, side rail, so one, two, and three, so it will force the platform to stop. That's basically everything for a multi-floor elevator setup that you need. So it gets uh, more and more complicated the more floors you're at, um, well, not complicated, more logic like these lines. So there's more logic to it, but it's not more complicated. The first two examples I showed will basically cover about 90% of all your elevator needs, I think. But uh, we have some additional uh, special kinds of elevators that we can make as time made. Uh, this, for example, is a angles elevator setup. I think I've only seen Landscape do it uh, at one time in one of his videos, but uh, never seen it really anywhere else. And if we press the button over here, you can see that it moves at an angle all the way to the top. There we go. Yeah, it can um, move a bit faster in my opinion, but uh, I didn't set it up uh, with a faster rail speed. And the only thing that this, um, this setup needs is two docked entities. The first docked entity will be docked to your mothership, that's this one. And we will rotate this duct entity 45 degrees. We can do that because this rail over here is linked to this active button. And if a rail is linked to an active button, it will uh, rotate the amount of active buttons that are uh, linked to it uh, for a quarter. So 45 degree angles. So only uh, one uh, block connected will only rotate it once for 45 degrees. That's what I used uh, this uh, setup for. And once we've got this angled docked entity, we can uh, set up a rail and we connect the basic logic here um, to uh, set the rail to go up or down. And to activate it, we uh, use a remote uh, block. So we can activate it from the mothership. Instead of that, we uh, need to go uh, in this entity to, to activate it itself. And then to this angled rail, we've talked another entity. And this entity also has a rotating block here in the middle that you also set off for a 45 degree angle. And this finally connects to the elevator platform. That's now because it's connected to other way, 45 degrees, at a 90 degree angle to the floor again. And the logic to uh, activate it is nothing more than just pressing a button and um, activating the corresponding remote blocks here. So if you press it here, it will move down again. 
and uh, that's about it. Uh, for multi-store setups, it's a similar setup as we showed in the second example, but you have to add the logic to um, the angled, uh, angled entity here. What you also have to take into account with a design like this is this will not completely level with the floor. So if we uh, move it up again, we can see that really, really clearly. Um, because if you go all the way here to this block at the end, it will not be level with this block over here, as you can see, or even the block below it. The difference is bigger. So if you always experiment a bit how you want to uh, connect it and how far you want to go with an angled setup like this. This next setup is uh, actually quite a personal favorite of mine. I did build this in one of my ships at, at one time. So let's press the button, see what happens. There we go. A set of floating stairs, sort of. It's also a way to get somewhere on top of a next platform, for example. And you already can see it here at the side. This consists of a, a lot of different entities because each of these uh, floating steps is a different docked entity. They just uh, move at different lengths. So it is a bit uh, heavy on the system resources if you uh, got a lot of uh, things like this uh, set up. The logic behind it is not that difficult. It's just a button for each rail where the entity is docked. So this one corresponds with the first one, as you can see, this one to the second one, etc., etc. And we just trigger it by a delay chain. So each delay triggers the next one. So that we get a nice flow in this going first and this going last. And the reverse is even easier because we just set every rail to go down like this. And then everything will slowly descend into place again. And of course, what is a tutorial without one of my crazy over the top projects to uh, conclude it? Well, in this case, I thought, okay, how can we move a piece of cargo from up here to down here? Well, by basically using a giant robot arm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I did that. Uh, it actually works. Um, this green rail you see here over here at the back is only to get this cargo crate back in its original position, but it will actually be picked up by the robot arm and put down here. I did make a pre-recording of this uh, robotic arm performing the action uh, because there's one uh, problem with this setup. Because StarMate is not always sure how certain parts of this robot arm moves, um, it can create duplicates or something like that, uh, duplicate entities. And the Galaxy doesn't like that, so you can basically uh, trash your Galaxy with this one. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to fire that up uh, live here. Like I said, I did a pre-recording for that. And as you can see, it actually works. And the way it works is not really that difficult. This line over here is all the actions each of the robot arm parts can take. So for example, uh, rotating the, the arm like this. And the way you program this thing is similar to how you do it in real life, I imagine. It's just a timeline, and then each individual part of the timeline will connect to each section of the uh, robot arm that we know how to move at that time. So that's the only thing it does. And then once it's uh, released the cargo here, it moves back in the original position. And then you can start the timeline again if you want. So I hope you uh, liked this example. I don't have any set plans for a 
uh, next subject for a tutorial about logic. So if you have any suggestions for me, let me know. If you want to uh, know something how to do with logic in StarMate, and I'll try to uh, set it up. See you next time.